This segment, we're going to talk about AC interference. And then in subsequent segments, we'll talk about um, how you model that. And then, and then in the third segment, we'll talk about how you mitigate that. But first, let's just talk about what is the impact of AC interference on pipelines. When we talk about AC interference, we're basically talking about power lines, high voltage power lines. Okay. More and more, we're seeing co-located utilities. So an area will say, this is our utility corridor. So if you want to run a pipeline, you run it through our utility corridor. If you want to put in a high voltage line, you run it through the utility corridor. So more and more, we're seeing high voltage lines and pipelines being put in the same usage corridor. It makes sense from a land usage standpoint. However, pipelines and high voltage transmission lines have an interaction that occurs when they're in the same um, co-located space. And there's a couple of different interaction methods or, or modes. The first mode is a conductive coupling that we're going to talk about. Okay. Conductive coupling occurs when there is a fault at the tower okay, or a fault along the transmission line. So this transmission line has all this electricity flowing through it and something happens, a storm happens and there's a fault condition and all of a sudden all that electricity gets dumped to earth, it's called a ground fault. Okay. And now I've got this pipeline that's in the earth, all of a sudden subject to this huge discharge of current because of some failure of the high voltage transmission line. One concern in conductive coupling is arcing, direct arcing. Arcing is a flow of current through the soil. Arcing is bad because an arc of electricity is like a welder. It, it actually burn a hole in the pipeline wall. Okay? But soil won't arc, or current won't arc through soil easily. Um, depending on the resistance of the soil, it'll, it'll only arc so, so far, and it depends on the voltage. So most of the concern is not around a direct arcing and burning a hole in a pipe. It can happen. Okay, I have a customer in New Jersey. Under the worst case scenario, they had a, 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 a electrical transmission line, was damaged during a storm, it fell to the earth, it landed right on top of their pipeline, the soil was saturated because it had been storming, and this happened to be a spot where the pipeline dipped up and was a little bit closer to the surface than maybe the rest of the pipeline. And it was a direct arcing, burned a hole in the pipeline, it was a gas pipeline, the gas ignited and created a big fireball. Okay. It can happen. And depending on the soil resistivity and the voltage of the system, we can predict how far arcing can occur through the soil. Okay. If, we're, if the pipeline's within that distance, then we have to put some sort of shield in there that's going to take that arc before it gets to the soil, or before it gets to the pipeline, and, and catch it and dissipate it. So we have to put something as a shield between the pipe and um, the tower footing where these can occur. So conductive couplings are rare occurrences. They can result in significant current discharging through the ground. Separation distance of the pipeline from the fault is critical, and soil resistivity is critical. I uh, know there's soil layering can effects can happen. So you could actually have a dry layer of soil or a wet layer of soil, dry layer of soil, and then a really wet layer of soil. And that could be where the arc would go through is that third layer. So we often have to measure soil to be at different layers or different depths to make sure we have a good profile of where arcing can occur. Okay, not easy for arcing to occur. It's relatively rare, um, but it would cause a melting of the pipe wall and catastrophic failure. The other issue with couplings, when we're discharging all this current into the earth, we have what's called a voltage rise in the earth. Okay, So from the point where the current's being dumped, you get this voltage rise and it radiates outward with the highest voltage cone in the middle and the further out you get, the less the voltage goes. Okay, Pipelines have coatings, most pipelines have a coating system on them. Okay, Almost all of your oil and gas type pipelines, hydrocarbon pipelines are going to have a coating. That coating can handle so much coating stress or voltage stress. Different coatings have different amounts of stress that they can handle, voltage gradients. If you exceed that voltage gradient, the coating can be damaged. It'll frizzle up, it'll become um, uh, weak, it'll despond, it'll it, it becomes friable. Um, uh, there are a variety of things bad that can happen to a coating system if it's subject to a voltage gradient higher than what it's rated for. Okay. 
So that's the other concern with a fault condition around the pipeline. The first and primary concern is it enough to cause an arc that can actually put, burn a hole in the pipe. Secondarily, is there enough of a voltage gradient across the, from the pipe and the coating that it would actually damage the coating? Because if you damage the coating, that becomes a coating defect that down the road could be an integrity issue for the pipe. The second issue or interaction, interaction or interference concern that we have when it comes to pipelines and high voltage lines is this idea of electromagnetic induction. Now with coupling, conductive couplings, this is during a fault. It's a rare event, may never happen in your lifetime in this area that you're concerned about. Or it could, and we have to plan for it, but it's a rare event, it's a failure of the high voltage system that's causing a dumping of current in the earth. Electromagnetic induction, on the other hand, is a pretty much a steady state thing. If there's current flowing through the line, you're going to have some form of an induced current flowing in the opposite direction along that parallel pipeline. Okay. How much that is depends on how much current's flowing through and a variety of other factors that we'll talk about. But this pipeline is going to be in the field if, it, if the pipeline is close enough to the transmission line and runs parallel to it for some period of time, it's going to be in the electromagnetic field that exists around that transmission tower or around the, the three lines of the AC transmission system. And being in that field will cause it to inductively pick up current. We call this an LEF field, longitudinal electrical field. You can actually measure it. If you were to take a piece of, of cable bare cable, copper copper cable, and you put two pins in the air, you put that copper cable in there, and you, you, and you staked it, that copper cable will start to pick up current. Okay? You'll actually, depending on how long the co-location is, and there's a lot of variables, but you can actually measure what that voltage that you pick up over a certain length of, of, of cable is. So AC induced current, um, corrosion. Uh, this is the effect that occurs when you pick up this AC. Um, the AC gets on the pipeline, it has to go, it has to leave the pipeline at some point. Okay? It can't just stay on the pipeline. So this induced AC is going to dissipate back to earth and again back to eventually back to the grounding system of the substation of the um, AC transmission facility. So this induced current has to get off the pipeline at some point. With well-coded pipelines, there's very few places for that current to exit. And that's where you start having this thing called AC-induced corrosion, okay? You can get very significant, very rapid corrosion occurring from AC-induced corrosion. We've had operators that have had brand new pipelines that within the span of a year have seen significant enough corrosion that the integrity of the pipeline is at risk if they didn't properly plan for that. Because of the really good coating systems, they, the old coating systems we used to have, they had so many defects in them, so many natural grounding points, that any AC that was picked up on the pipeline just kind of naturally would get its way off. Now the coating systems are so good that the, the AC that's being picked up on this parallel pipeline has nowhere to go. It just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden it finds the one small defect in an area and it all tries to rush off. And that's where this AC induced corrosion occurs. This is what AC induced corrosion looks like. It can be round kit craters, sometimes very deep, may even look like microbiologically induced corrosion because they have similar characteristics. Um, it occurs in the presence of AC transmission lines, sometimes in distribution lines, and typically it's in a low soil environment. And I'll explain why in just a second. Testing has found that the optimum coating holiday size for high AC corrosion is between one and three centimeters squared coating holidays. Okay, so it's these small coating holidays where lots of current being discharged through that small holiday that causes this AC induced corrosion. And we can measure that, it's called flux, and that's the amount of, of current over a certain surface area. So if we have 20 amps per meter squared or less being discharged off of a, a coating defect ground, we don't have any corrosion. 20 to 100 amps per meter squared, all of a sudden now we have a corrosion risk, this is based on testing that's been done, um, and above 100 amps per meter squared, you can expect corrosion to occur. 
it's not very hard to calculate what that amps per meter squared is for a given holiday size. Okay, so the um, current density is eight times the voltage AC divided by the resistivity pi and the diameter of the coding holiday. And if you do the math, you can find that for 1,000 ohm centimeter soil, 1,000 ohm centimeter soil is, is, is a very low resistance soil. Okay, so it would be something that, that is, it's a wet soil. It's typically it's, it's just low resistance. Um, for design purposes, we generally say normal soil is probably 5,000 ohm centimeter. Uh, but for 1,000 ohm centimeter soil, which is not unlike you know, it's not there's lots of soil out there that's that low resistance. Um, you can hit 100 amps per meter squared, which is 4.4 volts AC if you have a one centimeter squared holiday. So 4.4 volts AC is not a lot of volts picked up on the pipeline. In the old days, before we had all these great coatings, when we, we had coatings that were rather loosey and allowed the current to discharge to earth relatively easily, we always considered 15 volts AC as to be kind of a standard. But with today's good coatings and the very small holidays that these good coatings have, and infrequent holidays that they have, now we're looking at even a few volts AC on a pipeline could cause you to be above that threshold for corrosion to occur. You can chart this out. You can make a little chart that says holiday size versus AC volts in different soil resistances. And you can see where um, you fall into being in a corrosion environment. Now some recent studies um, have shown that there is a relationship between AC-induced corrosion and cathodic protection. And what they found is if you have no cathodic protection, um, then your AC-induced corrosion rates again, are going to be a function of how much AC is being discharged, but you, you have a high likelihood of it. If you have um, excessive CP current, that can actually exacerbate the AC corrosion process. So if you're in an area where you're worried about AC-induced corrosion, you have high voltage lines, you have AC being picked up on your pipeline, you're running through low resistance environments, you want to be careful not to put too much CP on your pipeline because it can actually exacerbate or make worse the corrosion rates if you have excessive polarization of the pipe. They're still trying to figure out exactly what those mechanisms are, but this is what's been observed in recent testing. This is all relatively um, new. The third threat of AC pipelines is the idea that you're picking up voltage on this pipeline and then at various locations the pipeline has what we'll call pertinences. They have valve stems, they have test stations, things that come above ground and somebody can touch them. Okay, So this pipeline's been picking up voltage and I go over to the pipeline and there's a, 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 a valve station or something and I touch it and this has got a lot of voltage on it. I could get shocked, I could even um, be hurt by that. We call that step and touch potential. Step potential or touch potential is easiest to realize, visualize. That's me touching something that has a lot of voltage. I'm touching some high voltage, my foot's touching the earth, current flows from my hand down through my heart to the earth. Not necessarily a good thing. Okay. The 15 volts pipeline standard for safety purposes has been around for a long time. And that's based on the average size of a man and what his resistance is um, to earth and what range would, would cause him to touch it and not be able to let go. Because when you touch something that's electrified, there's a certain uh, point when you, you're, it, it stops your muscles from being able to, the nerves to, to cause your muscles to let go, and you kind of get frozen to it. And then you can have heart palpitations and die. So the 15 volts was decided to be the maximum allowable threshold for step or touch potential. Step potential is a little different. I don't actually have to touch the device. Just the fact that there's a voltage gradient around that device and my feet are spanning the voltage gradient. So one foot is closer to the thing and another foot's back and there's a voltage gradient. Voltage could actually cause current to flow up my one foot and down the other foot. Okay? Because I'm just straddling this voltage gradient. That's called a, that's called a step potential. Okay? So a step and touch potential is what they talk about in safety literature when it comes to electrical fields and touching things that are electrified. Um, so there's three basic effects of AC. There's the 15 volts AC threshold for how much current or how much voltage we want to accumulate on the pipeline before it becomes a safety hazard to somebody touching the pipeline. 
where it comes above grade. That's kind of a hard and fast rule that's been in the industry for a long time. If we have more than 15 volts AC on the pipeline, we gotta do something to drop that voltage. There's fault conditions, rare but potentially catastrophic. That's the dumping of current into the earth. And then there's AC induced corrosion. That's the result of this interaction of the magnetic field generated by current flowing through the lines and how it reacts with the pipeline, okay? So that's AC interference. And in the next segment, we'll talk about modeling that AC interference.